Hi, in this video I'm going to go over uh, Junot Diaz's Drown, and I'm also going to be going over Sherman Alexie's The Lone Ranger and Tonto Fist Fight in Heaven. So let's turn to Canvas. Okay, so um, your readings for this week are here, obviously, but I'm going to go to Class Notes, which is where I've posted notes from class that I've taught live on these exact stories. So if you want to look at them for reference, please do. So Junot Diaz um, is a Dominican Republic immigrant um, and he was raised in New Jersey. Um, the story is semi-autobiographical and confessional. Um, he's most known for his Pulitzer Prize winning novel, The Brief and Wondrous Life of Oscar Wow. So if you haven't read it, you like the story, maybe consider it. Um, but this what we're going to read is called Drown. It's from a series of, of short stories that he wrote, which again are biographical. Um, it was written in 1996, though it takes place in the 80s in New Jersey. And it mostly deals with um, sort of Diaz's alter ego named Junior. Um, and Junior is a teen. Um, he has a mother who's a housekeeper. Um, he's dealing with the dynamic between his mother and father. His father is the main moneymaker. He's also um, a kind of a, um, a womanizer. Um, he also is dealing with some toxic masculinity. Um, and Junior's really stuck in between them. He really kind of involves himself in crime on the street and selling drugs and using drugs, mostly just to like have some money on the side, um, but also just because it, it's kind of a way that he explores his, um, you know, the struggles that he's dealing with. So he's really street smart. On the other hand, we've got kind of a antagonist in uh, Beto, who is his friend, is kind of the polar opposite of him. Beto is really a book smart and, and kind of privileged. He's got a lot more opportunities, definitely going to go to college. He tries to encourage uh, Junior to do the same, um, but Junior's just not really on his, his plane yet. He's not really interested in that, um, or maybe he's afraid to be interested in that. We don't know, but we do know that both of them are exploring their sexuality. Um, and some people might think that Beto is being a bit aggressive and even um, predatory in the story towards Junior. It really depends on how you want to look at it, um, but I think that's an interesting dynamic. Um, Beto also has kind of an inappropriate relationship with his father where he watches uh, you know, adult videos with him, um, which is a little strange, um, but it really depends, again, on, on what you kind of your perspective of it. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of the situation with that story in a nutshell. Um, we're also going to be reading Sherman Alexie. So I did post this little thing. Um, so Sherman Alexie is a, um, a Native American who uh, grew up in Spokane, Washington, um, and he lives in Seattle now. He is um, he did grow up on a, a Indian reservation um, and did have to assimilate into an American sort of identity. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with Indian reservations, they are federally recognized as sovereign, so they are self-governed, um, and it's um, they're not necessarily the greatest places. Usually, they were you know shrunken even more and pushed even more into areas where there's a lot of poverty. And the resources aren't really plentiful. Um, and at the time when uh, Lexi was growing up, he was forced to be bused to a kind of white Eurocentric school in which they were forced to leave behind their native language and culture and kind of accept this Christian white American sort of identity. Um, and he writes a lot about that in his stories and in his books. Um, and there's also a lot of dealing with addiction, abuse, poverty, throughout his stories. Um, and so um, what's interesting is the title, The Lone Ranger and Tonto Fistfight in Heaven. <laughs> it's kind of, again, a battle between identities, right? You've got the Lone Ranger, who's really like an American Western sort of ideal um, hero, and then you've got Tonto, right? Which is also kind of created by <laughs> this white myth. Um, but again, you've got these like these characters kind of fighting, and it kind of connects to this fighting of identity. Um, also, the story is really strongly in stream of consciousness, so you'll notice that that's kind of, the narrative is in first person, just like Drown, but it's really interesting. It, it really just is his thoughts kind of flowing. Um, there's a lot of anger, right, represented by the broken lamp. Um, there's also a central relationship that's broken that is kind of worked through, as well as his own identity that he's working through. Um, there's hints at alcoholism. Um, there's uh, all these kind of references to being off the reservation. He has that interaction with the man at the 7-Eleven where the man is like, please don't act crazy. Like, um, and it just kind of highlights again the, the, the way that natives are viewed and the way they feel as if they are viewed by um, Americans. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so hopefully that gets you started as you're reading these stories. Um, all right, thanks.